I was on a seven day solo canoe trip in Northern Algonquin Park. The trip started at Algonquin Park's access point number one at Kawewemog Lake, located in the northwest corner of the park, where I paddled across Kawewemog Lake to the Amabultafond River and made my way to Kawawaskigamog, or North Tea Lake, where I camped the first night. From there, I slow traveled, and on day two, I paddled from my campsite on the west arm of North Tea to a small lake called Mangotasi. Then, on day three, I continued to canoe from Mangotasi to Bigger Lake, passing through Hornbeam Lake and the Twin Falls. Day four, I traveled from Bigger Lake through Sinclair Lake, Kawa, and Upper Kawa Lakes to Three Mile Lake. On day five, I pushed on from Three Mile Lake, portaged the canoe and gear to Manitou Lake, and camped out in the rain. It had been raining for two days now, and I was awake most of last night because of the heavy winds and rains. The trip was nearing its end. I was alone in Algonquin Park for seven days, and now it's day six. After a night of severe weather, the sun started to rise and the rain continued to fall. The campsite was soaked, but fortunately, I had the good sense to bring my gear under the tarp the previous evening. I lay in my hammock a while to try and wait out some of the rain. Good morning. I was gonna say the rain has started to settle, but it might be starting up again. So it's, uh, yeah, I checked the time, it's around 7.30, 8 o'clock. And uh, the place is soaked out there. So, I'm just gonna hang back and rest for a while longer and then assess the situation. I have uh, another night in the park on uh, Tea Lake again. I could definitely make it all the way out of the park if I chose to, and it really depends on what the weather's gonna be like. I don't wanna spend a day hung up in the hammock. But I also don't wanna be traveling in uh, bad weather and, you know, both Manitou and North Tea or decent sized lakes and can get pretty choppy and all of that so don't want to take any unnecessary risks so it might be better for me to just stay put even instead of going to North Tee um, certainly nobody in the park so it's not like I'm taking up anybody's campsite and I'm also hoping that uh, you know, as time goes, the sun will come out and make for a nice day. But I really don't know what the weather forecast is. Um, I knew what it was seven days ago, and today is supposed to be nice, or at least a mix of sun and cloud. So that's wrong, but maybe it will be later on. There's a lot to consider when out backcountry canoeing alone in unfavorable weather. What direction is the wind coming from? How strong is the wind? How large are the waves and which direction are they moving? Is it easy to access the shore if I get in trouble? How warm is the water? Should I stay or should I go? The sensible thing would be to stay and wait until I knew the weather had cleared up.
My plan was to get out and do a short distance. There was a small bay not far ahead where there would be considerable shelter from the wind and then a 550 meter portage and waterfall that I knew was worth checking out. On the other side of the portage was the east arm of North Tea Lake where I was planning to spend the night. There was another bay immediately after the portage with a few campsites close by if the weather picked up again. Otherwise, I'd paddle a bit further. Made it. Really, it was just bad on the main Manitou Lake. Once I got into the side bays, I had shelter from the wind and uh, it was pretty smooth paddling. I got to the portage, 550 meters from Manitou to North T, uh, the waterfall here. And uh, yeah, the sun is coming out. So it's great. Um, Deer flies are out, so I'm gonna get some bug spray on for doing the portage, and I'll stop in to have a look at the falls a bit higher up. The portage from Manitou to North Tea Lake is marked 550 meters, but Jeff's map has it as 580 meters. It's a relatively steep hike in both directions, and sandals are the preferred footwear, as long as you're also wearing socks. You can see the falls through the trees over there. Sight over there. Have a look in a minute. Almost at the end of the portage. See the lake. North Tea Lake. All right, well, before we head back out on the water, let's go have a look at that campsite over here and the waterfalls. Yeah, it's not a bad little spot. It's right in a wind tunnel, so fire pit's built up quite a bit. And uh, I guess you'd have the noise of the falls all night, but, but it's a pretty little spot. So if you like wind, noise, and people portaging past your camp, and to also see the waterfall, this campsite is probably close to perfect.
With the portage out of the way and a moment to enjoy the waterfall, I was back out on the water and into the headwind. I hope it's not masochistic, but I find some joy canoeing in the wind. Although the wind is always better on my back, there's a sense of accomplishment that comes from traveling against the odds that a strong headwind can offer. Still, it's probably best to know when it's a good time to pull over. Okay, so I just pulled into a campsite on the east arm of North T. Um, it's raining, the wind's really heavy out there, and it's not a bad campsite. So I think I might stay the night here. I'll show you around. Um, but I think I'll show you the weather on the other side first. Where I pulled in, I'm on a peninsula and it's a bit sheltered over there, but this is the other side. So it looks like I'd just be paddling into wind, waves, and rain. So I think I did good. I wasn't sure if I would even come out and get out to Tea Lake, North Tea Lake today. Um, so I accomplished that and that means that tomorrow from here is probably about four hours worth of paddling to the access point, my car and my way to home. So I'm actually pretty happy that I stopped in here and I think this campsite is becoming one of my favorite sites in the park. It's got a nice open space. Now, of course, the next point won't be all year, but there's plenty of firewood, like it's early in the season, so tons of down branches, um, but lots of open space. It's on a point, so I can walk out to the end and I can look one way or the other way down the lake. Out here, I've got an island a little ways out, so it's not just you know, water or shore on the other side, but it's got a feature out there. Um, the fire pit's nice. Even though it's on a point, it's wide enough that you get a breeze, but it's not super gusty. Um, like, I think it's gonna be comfortable. And I would say that later in summer, when it's hot, this will probably be a, you know, a prime real estate. Um, anyway, so, yeah, like the spot. Uh, spent some time getting ready and just sorting out camp. So I hung my tarp. This time I did, uh, I think this is called a sea fly wedge. I could be wrong. Um, I'll put a link to this tarp setup anyway. I know I've done a video on it. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, usually it doesn't have the, the pole in the center, but I like to modify it a little bit uh, just gives more headroom especially you know getting in and out of the hammock uh, I don't have to duck in or duck out uh, it's a little bit open I can take the pole out later on if I wanted to uh, you know just to stop wind or rain uh, but I can also add the fly that goes with the hammock and that would give me more and enough uh, shelter from those elements anyway um, yeah, I hung the food bag, uh, that's always fun. So yeah, it is what it is. I got the lines hung, the bag's still down here. I'll take my food out for dinner and then I'll go do that. Uh, I did a video on how to tie the ax hitch and uh, that's on my knot channel. Uh, so that's the, the ax hanging up there with that knot. Um, yeah, productive day. So, went in the water, got cleaned up. It's nice. <laughs> anyway, I've got to flip the canoe so that it doesn't blow away while I'm sleeping. Uh, I'll show you around camp a little bit and then I'm gonna get cooking dinner because tonight is a special night.
Okay, let me show you around quick. So, yeah, I've got the water filter hung up here off this tree. Um, it's full and ready to be used. Over here, I have my fire pit area. Uh, like I said, a nice fire pit, great sitting area. Hung the hammock tarp. Show you the point again. So it's just over here. Right, so out here, the point, view of the islands, right, all the way over. So I'll show you where I have the rope hung for the, the food to hang later. So as you can see, lots of branches down. Lots of firewood. Here's the tree that blew over. Found that and uh, that's where I got the, the piece that I use for my post for the shelter. More wood, right? And then this okay and no I'm not just gonna hoist it up next to the tree it's the pulley system so I've got my rope here and then actually wrong rope so I've got my rope here and then as I pull it You know, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but as I pull it, the pulley pulls out away from that tree and then into this big center area. And, uh, yeah, that'll work. I'm going to get cooking dinner because it's after six o'clock. It's probably around seven o'clock. It's getting on. Um, haven't eaten a whole lot. Had my trail mix and oatmeal and protein bar, but I've got the best meal ever now. Mountain house, chicken breast, and garlic mashed potatoes. So Derek who comes out canoe tripping with me, or we go out together I should say, um, he gave me a couple of these because he knows that I like them so much. He gave them to me I think two years ago and yes Derek this is the chicken and mashed potatoes from two years ago but that's okay because it's got a good shelf life it expires in uh, March 2049 so I should be good Let's stand for two minutes. I've got an idea. Let's see if I can start a fire in these two minutes using those Bigfoot bushcraft fire plugs. They're supposed to work in wet conditions and it's been raining for two days. So here's the test.
Thanks, Derek. This is so good, you know? It's like... Freeze-dried meal that lasts for another 20 years. It's good. If ever I travel to Mars, I hope they have this on the ship. So I guess those fire plugs are pretty good. This is the first trip that I've brought them on and uh, I didn't know, you know. It, like, I usually bring a ferro rod and start my fires that way anyhow. And an old friend used to say that I could start fire with two bricks and a snowflake. So I'm pretty good at it. What I'm saying is I don't know if I need the Bigfoot bushcraft fire plugs, but they're definitely convenient. I've used them for every fire and uh, yeah, they do as they claim. Definitely useful for someone coming out here for the first time. I remember I brought a group of, uh, I think there were six of us. Yeah, six of us, three canoes. And uh, five people couldn't get a fire started. So, so for that group, that would have been great. And talk about confidence builder for someone who's new to this and hasn't started a fire in the woods before. Jason Eek says they're okay. I woke up and although the air was damp, the rain had stopped. It was the start of my last day in Algonquin Park, the day that would complete my seven day solo canoe trip. I was going to be traveling back the way I came, further west on North Tea Lake, down the Amabal Defond River, and out of the park on Kawewemog Lake at Algonquin's access point number one. Today was like every other day for the past week, starting with walking back and bringing the food bag down, followed by boiling some water and making coffee, slowly waking up. This morning was a little different though. It was quiet and reflective. I've been on a lot of canoe trips now. Sometimes it's difficult to decide which ones are favorites. There's so many stories from all of them. One thing I've found is that there are some trips that I'm happy to finish and look forward to getting out and returning home, while there are others that I'm sad to see end. This was one of the latter. Although the environment was always changing, 
the landscape was peaceful. It was beautiful. I was alone in Algonquin Park for seven days, and that was my story.